to the service of Helensborough Parish Church, linked with Rue and Shandon. It's good to have you with us this morning, wherever you happen to be. Many of you will recognise where I am today. I'm in the gathering space of Helensborough Parish Church, an aptly named place where people meet to chat before the Sunday service, where those who work here get together to plan events and activities, where we congregate to worship on a Wednesday lunchtime, where the many people who use the Bridge Hall complex drop by for a comfy seat and a cup of tea. Of course, none of that has been possible these past few months. This space of gathering has remained empty, yet ready for the day when we can all meet together safely. And yet today we gather, albeit remotely, to remember the times of fellowship here and to share at God's table and all your tables at home in the sacrament of Holy Communion. For everyone born, there is a place at the table. Christ himself has declared it in his death and resurrection. So join us. You are very welcome. Let's begin by hearing the choir of Helmsborough Parish Church singing our introit, Ubi Caritas et Amor, by Ola Helm. Mm -hmm.
before God now in prayer, let us pray. Gathering God, breaker down of barriers, opener of doors and hearts, bringer together of friends and strangers, preparer of tables and feasts, lover of the lost and lonely, friend of sinners and reprobates, promiser of life everlasting, we come to you this day. We come to worship you for your greatness and goodness. We come to praise you for your faithfulness and your faith in us. We come, your people scattered but united in the service of your kingdom, here in our own little part of your great universe. Loving Lord, we need not look far to be reminded of your glory. A summer colour begins to be transformed into the magnificent tones of autumn. We see your handiwork. Forgive us the times we fail to recognise you in the world around us. When in our greed we destroy our planet's preciousness. When in our abundance we ignore need. When in our fellowship we forget those who are lonely. When in our haste we pass by the stumbling. When in our health we fail to help the sick. When in our gathering we exclude the stranger. Forgive us, Lord, and give us eyes to see you and a heart open to your presence, that we might be faithful to your call to us, to be loving and compassionate seekers of justice. May our worship today be worthy of you, the God who keeps his promises and who calls us friends. And may our lives tell the holy human story of the God who came to be one of us and lives still with us through the power of his Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, many of you I'm sure will have heard by now of the death of our good friend, the Reverend Jim Brown. Jim was a well-loved person around this community. He was minister, of course, at the former Park Church in Helensborough here for 28 years. And in that time, he made many friends and served his God most faithfully. While we are sad at Jim's passing, we are grateful too for his life and for his service, and also knowing now that he is in the arms of his Saviour, who he served so well. And our thoughts and our prayers elsewhere go out to you and Kirsty and Andrew and all the family. As I mentioned earlier, we are sharing later in the Sacrament of Holy Communion, and all who love the Lord and wish to love him more are welcome to share with us at the table. We're going to hear our scripture reading now, and Andrew Nisbet of Ruin Chandon Parish Church, Andrew's our treasurer here, is going to read the lesson for us. And today we hear from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20, and I'm using the New English Bible. If your brother commits a sin, Go and take the matter up with him, strictly between yourselves. And if he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he will not listen, take one or two others with you, so that all the facts may be duly established on the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, report the matter to the congregation. And if he will not listen even to the congregation, you must then treat him as you would a pagan or a tax gatherer. I tell you this, whatever you forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you allow on earth shall be allowed in heaven. Again, I tell you this, if two of you agree on earth about any request you have to make, that request will be granted by my heavenly Father. For where two or three of you are met together in my name, I am there among them. Amen. The choir of Hillsborough Parish Church now sing our anthem. 
The True and Living Bread by David Black. state-of-the-art suite of halls appropriately called the Bridge. It connects not just the halls with the church but with the local community who use the Bridge every day of the week. A few months ago, with more than 50 organisations using this building, it would have been rare not to see this room filled with folk. Covid-19 has left this usually busy and buzzing space empty and quiet. That's true of so much of our lives these past months. Our natural instinct as human beings is to gather together. Whether it's a group of family, friends, colleagues or fellow worshippers, there's a sense of togetherness that simply cannot be achieved through a computer screen. That's been one of the hardest things to deal with since the pandemic took hold. Internet connection is a blessing, but it's no substitute for the real thing. Even though we are now allowed to meet, numbers are restricted and handshakes, hugs and socialising have been replaced by hand sanitizer, face masks and social distancing. Many organisations simply cannot get together because they don't fit the necessary health and safety criteria. Every event and activity must be carefully planned before it can go ahead. Church services, when they resume, will be unlike anything you or I 
could have imagined. In the space of a few months, our understanding of what it means to gather has been turned totally on its head. Much of what we have taken for granted has been taken away, and it's not nice. It's restricting and upsetting and frustrating, and we wonder sometimes if it will ever end. Where two or three are gathered? We heard these words earlier when Andrew read our Gospel passage for us. How often have we heard or said that phrase? It sometimes trips off the tongue when disappointingly few folk turn up for a meeting. It's a kind of never mind Jesus is still here encouragement. A form of reassurance that all is still well and that even a handful of the faithful is better than none. That's taking those words out of their original context. Remember, the evangelists weren't newspaper reporters or historians. They were pastoral leaders, helping their community to make sense of and try to live their lives in the light of the story of Jesus. So they chose specific teachings of Jesus that related to their particular community's situation and needs at any given time. This passage is an attempt by Matthew's community to address a difficult and complicated situation with what it remembers of Jesus and his teaching. We can assume that Matthew uses these words for a church community that's struggling with disagreement and discipline. Where two or three are gathered to deal with a difficult situation, Matthew assures his readers that Christ's healing presence is among them to bridge the divide. And what we learn is it's not about punishment or retaliation or settling scores or gaining power or righting past wrongs. It's about healing and restoration, even for those we wouldn't normally include. Because much of Jesus' ministry is about mingling with those on the margins, Gentiles and tax collectors among them. The assurance of Jesus' presence is a reminder to us today when we find ourselves divided not by disagreement or dispute, but by disease. That what we say and do together, even physically apart, is said and done always in the presence of Christ. That the work we do, even in these restricted times, is not done alone, but always with Jesus' presence and help. And that ours is not meant to be a cosy gathering of the like-minded, but an open door to all. We may not be together in the physical sense, but one thing we can take for granted is the healing presence of Christ which gathers us in spirit and which works to heal the hurts and frustrations of our community and our world. For there is much that is challenging in that world right now. From coronavirus to displays of hate, injustice and intolerance. There's much that is challenging in our own lives and in those of our friends and neighbours. From heartaches and fears to hopes and dreams. The world desperately needs us to be the body of Christ. And we don't need to be gathered in a church building to do that. Nor do we need to be gathered at the very same table to share in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Yes, it would be wonderful if we could do that. And we continue to pray that one day we will. Meantime, let us put our faith and trust in the Christ who enters the divide to heal and unite us as one in him. Let this be our never mind Jesus is still here encouragement. And let us look beyond our worries and concerns to include those who yearn to be part of our gathered community but who still feel excluded. As we sing in a moment or two our communion hymn, I invite you to imagine the faces of those you know are gathered like you in front of a screen. 
Imagine to those who are not and who can't be for whatever reason. And as we do that, let's remind ourselves that together, remotely or hopefully soon physically, we can become the people and community God wants and needs us to be. And let this time and place, whenever and wherever for you it may be, be our gathering space, a space where we are together in spirit and in common purpose, a space where healing can happen, a space where Christ himself waits for us, the table prepared, the promise of life and love still wet on his lips. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Friends, as we gather today to join in our holy feast, we are only a screen width apart. The God of all creation is not limited to the bounds of time or place. God transcends our physical distances and parts the veil between us so that we may be together in this space of mystery and love. What we do at our tables today at every table at which you sit, unites us as one creation, one body, one church. So come, let us break bread together with Christ who invites us to join him at this feast. And as we prepare to celebrate this meal, let's sing. Jesus calls us here to meet him.
you owe. If you're sitting with someone, then turn to them now and offer them God's peace. If you're alone, then speak the peace as you imagine the face of a friend or a loved one. God's peace with us all. Together we share a table of enormous width, one which embraces the world and all its people, one at which all are welcome. The table is bare as we wait for it to be filled with God's care, compassion and love. At the wedding feast, Jesus proclaimed, my time has not yet come. Yet persuaded by his mother, he turned water into wine. I invite you now to please what elements you have to serve as your bread and fruit of the wine, knowing that grace will justify your choices in the sight of God. Our table is now set, and as Jesus, as Jesus sat at table ready to eat with his friends, before he broke the bread, he said a prayer. Let's do the same. Let's pray. God of all creation and creature, you are with us. We give thanks to you. You created us in your image and gave us life with your breath. Your love does not falter even as we neglect it. You liberated us from bondage and continue to ease our burdens and our worries. With joy and with all of creation, we proclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and grace. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, we are blessed with the gift of your Son, Jesus. Your Spirit descended on him so that he could proclaim good news to the poor, heal the sick, feed the hungry, cavort with sinners and liberate the captives. His life gave birth to the Church through a new covenant born out of the Holy Spirit whose power dwells within us today. In remembering the life and love of Jesus, we offer ourselves as living witnesses proclaiming the mystery of faith and committing ourselves to serving your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the night on which he gave himself over to be crucified, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After dinner, he took the cup, gave thanks and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for me. Drink from it to remember me. Pour out your Spirit, Lord, on all those gathered in this holy time and space. Pour out your Spirit on the gift of this bread and this wine. Transform these elements that they may transform us to be the body of Christ for the world. This bread is made from many grains, from many fields, yet it was formed into a single loaf because there is one God. And we, though many, and in many places, are one holy body. Join us as we share in the body of Christ in remembrance of him. 
the body of Christ given for you. Let us know. This fruit of the vine is made by many hands from many places, yet it pours freely. Join us as we share in this blessing of the cup of the new covenant, the cup of blessing poured out for you and for all. Let us drink. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In the living Christ's name, may we know peace. Friends, we have tasted the bread of life and sipped the living spirit. We are refreshed and renewed in Christ and equipped to serve him, wherever and however that may be. In our homes, through our computer screens, on our phones, from behind our masks, for nothing, not even a virus, can separate us from one another or from the love of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for this mystery of faith where you have given yourself to us. Your spirit makes us one with Christ and one with each other. It binds, blends and multiplies us as we minister to the world as one beloved community of faith, singing your praises on earth and in heaven until Christ comes again and we feast at the divine table in perfect harmony. We are aware, Lord, that not everyone who wants to or needs to can gather with us today. Let's take a moment in silence to name those to whom we want to extend the grace of this table, that they may know they are not forgotten, but are part of the one fellowship of Christ which gathers here and beyond. May we go now into the world strengthened by your spirit in a spirit of generosity in the name of Jesus Christ. All honour and glory are yours, Lord God, now and forever. And now we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, thank you for sharing with us today. Our final hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
now may you go trusting in God's promises to his people of peace, security and blessing. May you know that God's news is good news, nourishing and true. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring liberty to those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all creation. May that path run through our lives. May we be the road Christ takes. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, this day and always. Amen.